two batches of straw. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Couple of things. Um, this is more for you younger blokes, really. Um, when you're going up quite high, which is you know not down here, and I was laying up here, um, always check your last couple of calls, you know, with the level. Just make sure it's all sitting flat to the line. Because what happens is you tend to. As you're laying on, you tend to pull towards you. Um, I don't, because I know it's, I sort of mentally correct it, but you know, just be aware of that. Another thing I forgot to say, when you're sitting out, always remember to get this bond right. It's a stretcher to a stretcher, a header to a header. You know, the times you see a stretcher against head, you think, why well, have you done that? I know it's, you know, mistakes are made, but it really don't look right. And, you know, once you've done it, it's done, isn't it? What can you do about it? Um, yeah. Well, I've finished this uh, flank uh, wall. Uh, it's hard to get a good job of these bricks. They're crap, aren't they? But you know, ain't bad, is it? Ain't bad, governor. Uh, right, block work round here. All we've got to drive out here. Um, I put some profiles up, only because they're here. Uh, it only took me five minutes to put them up. It all helps, in it? That clamps around the wrong side. I've got to move that. But I'll wait till I get up there. Um, Profile this in, just Dutch clamps, bit of batten as a spacer, and that's it. Where you go, insulation uh, on these ends. You always keep it 30 mil back, or depending, I suppose what uh, what cavity closures you're using. But the ones we use are all, all 30 mil. Um, I've just run a pencil line out there, just keep it, keep it nice and tidy. Um, always butt them. You don't bend it round. You butt it so there's no uh, air gaps. And half bond it, always half bond it, and all start from one end, you know, start from that end and go along, then you only get one cut, all that, you know, your silly bit in the middle, and you get, then you just get rubbish littering the job, and you know, everywhere. Uh, all right, that's it, get this up now. Change the trowel, remember that? That's that one I got the car boot for 50 pence, brand new, look. Still got the uh, mark where the sticker was, it was just covered in cement. I'll give it a good clean up. Uh, I like the WHS when I'm just laying these lightweight blocks. It's uh, a bit of weight to it, isn't it? You can just sort of tap the blocks down a little bit better. Mind you, there won't be a lot of tapping down here. Um, not quite big beds. I don't, this, um, I don't suppose many of you have used it, really. I used it, I don't know, 40 odd years ago. The uh, the uh, thin bed system for blocks, we used to use it in Germany. I think it's a great system. Um, we just don't use it here, do we? Um, you know, especially we've probably got the most stringent thermal regulations in Europe uh, and we're still using mortar joints on the block work don't know, don't know, don't know why it did. Uh, Rob Song had done a video on it some while back uh, and it just you know it just don't take off here I don't know it's a good system you can you can build the whole house um, out your block work just like a timber frame building and everyone can carry on working and then the brick lads can come along later and just you know do the outside skin but, uh, uh, we're, we're a bit backward, aren't we, really, in this country when it comes to things like that. All right, I'll have a cup of tea, and then uh, we're going to crack on. No singing. You're on mic. Okay, sir. No singing. So you've got to go back? Good job. Yeah. Where's the plasters? Oh, they're not going there until Monday. Oh. I just want to make sure everything's there ready for me. Yeah, just leave it all out in the rain, it'd be great. No, I'll we'll cover it up. <laughs> I was joking. I didn't mean keep it out in the rain. You know, a sense of humour, have you? I have. I 
saying all the right things but not listening in the right order. <laughs> mm. My mate's like that, like you though. Yeah. Not quite with it sometimes, because he's diabetic. Really? Yeah, and he, he, he goes in and out of, sort of floats into a bit of a daze and all that. No, I don't do that. You do? Do I? Yeah. Really? Yeah. When? All the time. You don't know you're doing it. He don't know you're doing it. Really? Yeah. He's, he's blood sugar levels. Fluctuating. Yeah, honestly. Do you know what? That probably explains a few things. I'll tell you, because I know from him and I know it's for you. Look, I'm not fucking serious. You're not a div or anything like that. No, no, no. <laughs> No, but yeah, I know. I haven't heard that word for a long time. Huh? I haven't heard that word for a long time. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I noticed it. And a few other people I've seen with who are quite bad with diabetes. A lot of time I'm thinking of other things, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. I'm preoccupied in other ways, you know. Sometimes. But maybe that is part of it as well, Andy. Yeah. Know? Yeah, probably. It will be. I know one thing. When I go low, yeah, oh, that's, which is very, very rare. It's my own stupid fault if I don't eat, you know yeah. what I mean, I have to eat. And, uh, and I've done it before. That's that night I had all my tools in. Yeah. yeah. Same thing, I was low. Went indoors, and sat there and sat to eat, fell asleep. I came to come in the pub a while back, in, in the uh, coach. Yeah. He's passed out. Did he? Yeah. I said to him, mate, what's the matter with this? He said, his, his, his blood sugar levels had dropped. Oh. So I've got the uh, Thai bird. Yeah. Get one of them really sweet cakes they have, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thai Yeah, yeah. Uh, got a shove in his mouth. Did yeah. you move his jaw up and down there, yeah, mate, you meet it. He was oh, out. Yeah. Bloody hell, that was lucky. Yeah. You might have saved his life. Well, everyone was running about like endless chickens, didn't know what to do. Yeah. And it's only because my mate's diabetic, I've, I've had to help him out a couple yeah. of times. That's why I tell people as well, Andy. And he was sweating, he came to, and he was sweating and sweating and sweating. Yeah, he came over cold sweat. Fucking sat down, and then two minutes later he got up and drank his part of Guinness, there's nothing wrong with him. That's it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Exactly it. Yeah. You feel your, I know, I feel myself when it's, when I'm low, I feel like I'm like this, Andy, shaking like that. Yeah. But you're not. No. You know, you feel like you're shaking in all, all like, you can be all over like that. He, like was, he was shaking. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't physically shake. I feel like I am, you know. But it's only happened a couple of times. Because uh, if that happens and you pass out like that, and that's reported, yeah. you lose your license. You lose your license, yeah, I know. Yeah. He's a machine driver, this bloke, at all. Really? Yeah. Bloody hell. Still filming me? Hi? You still filming? Yeah. You've got a little load down on my health. <laughs> yeah, they know that, you know. I reckon Bob ain't diabetic anymore. Really? Yeah, his blood test is showing him all right. Well, that's good. Yeah. He was on insulin at one time. And what's he doing for it then? Is he uh... <laughs> oh, nothing. Nothing different. He's eating all kinds of shit. Oh really? Yeah. Well his body must have balanced up again then. Yeah, that's... Because sometimes it can. Yeah. Well that's why I tell people, you know, like yourself and that, because if you didn't know and something... Oh, yeah, you've got to know. Yeah. It's never happened, but... If it yeah. did, you just, you at least you'd know, you know. You know what it is, yeah. Exactly. I've got a couple of mates of mine, they don't eat all day and all night. Don't, oh, they don't eat all day from when they get up right through to about 8 o'clock at night and then they have an evening meal and that's all they have every day. I know people like that, I don't know how they do it. Nor do I. I love eating. Oh, <laughs> I have to eat. I can't. I'll, well, where are we now? I've got this up seven calls, so seven, I sometimes go eight on here. Um, not bad. That's flat and plum-ish. 
Um, I don't joint block work up. Complete waste of time. If a builder wants it jointed up, he can do it himself with his own jointer. I'm not um, wearing out a decent jointer on block work. You don't have to do it. Oh, it's an HBC thing, isn't it? Or some builders want it. Um, <coughs> there's not one authorised document in print what says you have to joint block work up. It's no bollocks. Um, it just says it has to be airtight. And my joints are full. That's airtight. So, um, what are we going to do now? Right, I'm going to set a hop up in here. Uh, and we've probably got about 11 calls, somewhere somewhere near Joystar anyway. This goes right up, there's a parapet, um, so it's been scaffolded anyway. But what happens is, um, you put the scaffold up and you end up having to do the block work over hand, because it's not a site, you don't get no, no, nothing built in here for it. Um, so I'll find it easier to do it, get this block work up off and hop up, then you ain't got to mess about off the scaffold doing it over hand. Um, that's why these jobs are, similar to that. That's why you've got to be careful pricing them. You can't price them like site work, a lot more, lot more expensive. Um, so we get this op up, up and uh, that'll probably be it really. I'm not doing much more today. Don't fancy it, innit? <laughs> Watcher, Sunday morning. Uh, I'm still at it. Uh, unloading the transit at long last. Oh, all the shit in there and now I've got a lock up. Fault of the brim now. Found a brick barrow in the back there. I got that in Australia, brought it back in about 1982, 83. Used to use it a hell of a lot. Um, haven't used it for ages now. Good bit of kit. Um, yeah, I should start using it more really. Right, Tesco's now. Fun, eh? Monday, got the old Long John's on and the Essien in the van. Be one of them weeks, isn't it? Um, just show you the back of that block work. So, like I said, I don't join nothing up. Uh, just keep everything solid and full. That's all we've got to do. Right, we're um, just going around here. This bit I showed you last week. Um, part of the party wall agreement, we've got to do this gully. Down here, so that any water, there won't be no water, runs through there and out there, and there's going to be an echo drain down there. We've worked the levels out. Um, it's all I've done. There's a 75 mil full from this end to that end. Um, so I've set the line at that full and then just put a mark where I know the top of my um, screen's going to be, there ain't a lot to go on there and then I'll just move that along and that'll get, get me where I want to be um, so we'll do that now Melvin's got the flu and he ain't too well and he's just going to get the fence panel and a gravel ball to go in there and then we'll start getting the rest of this up this is what we did down here uh, got 75 mil full from there to there um, put this little bit of brickwork up there they wanted the face side that side they got it uh, flattens I know not best but that's what they wanted gravel board and the uh, fence panel back in that's the uh, what's it called Party wall, that's the party wall agreement satisfied. Um, so now I'm gonna get on with this. I was asked about the uh, this profile set up with the Dutch pins. Um, oh, of course, I've been doing it for so long, I just take for granted that everyone knows how to do it, but um, some people don't. So uh, let's talk about Dutch pins first. There's several types, um, these are the best ones. They're like car, well they're not cars, but um, they're German. Well, I suppose they're all German, aren't they? Um, these ones, because they've got that big bend on it, and that gives you, pl gives you plenty of purchase. They're a little bit better. These are quite cheap, but they work well. Um, and these ones, you see, they're so flat, they don't grab onto nothing. They're not very good. So if you're going to buy them, be careful. Don't ask where you get them. Have a look on Amazon and just do a Google search. Uh, I don't know when um, they offer sell, but be aware of these ones. Don't buy these ones. If you do get them, uh, you, you can just use a bit of batten between there and the profile here, and it does help pack it out a bit. But what I do, um, when I put my fur fix up, because this, this is hard, you know, trying to bang into that, you ain't going to do it. That's why I put the profile up of the gallows brackets up there, because um, you can't be banging pins into it. You just, you know, even good footprint pins your damage. Um, I did do a video some time back where I'd actually just 
drill small holes in there so I'll put a nail in there, that works as well, but because I weren't quite happy with the gauge we're not doing that. Uh, yeah, so when I'm drilling out for my fur fix, I'll drill an hole out where I know my uh, duct pin's going to go. Uh, and you just basically just bang it in there, I'll put a spacer behind it so you can get the line behind it. Uh, and in this situation where it's overhand, I'll just use one of these clamps um, to hold it there and that's it. Uh, on this side it will just be uh, two Dutch clamps um, pinned in. It's that simple really. They, uh, right, they just go in like that. Profile there, bit of batting behind it, just bang it in. Great things. Yo. I was asked about the uh, this profile set up with the Dutch pins. Um, oh, of course I've been doing it for so long I just take for granted that everyone knows how to do it. But um, some people don't. So uh, let's talk about Dutch pins first. There's several types. Um, these are the best ones. They're like car well, they're not cars, but um, they're German. Well, I suppose they're all German, aren't they? Um, these ones because they've got that big bend on it, and that gives you plenty, gives you plenty of purchase. They're a little bit better. These are quite cheap, but they work well. Um, and these ones, you see, they're so flat, they don't grab onto nothing. They're not very good. So if you're going to buy them, be careful. Don't ask me where you get them. Have a look on Amazon and just do a Google search. Uh, I don't know. Um, they are for sale. But be aware of these ones. Don't buy these ones. If you do get them, uh, you can just use a bit of batten between there and the profile here. And it does help pack it out a bit. But what I do, um, when I put the fur fix up, because this, this is hard, you know, trying to bang into that, you ain't going to do it. That's why I put the profile up of the gallows brackets up there, because um, you can't be banging pins into it. You just, you know, even good footprint pins, you're damaged. Um, I did do in a video some time back where I'd actually just drill small holes in there so I can put a nail in there. That works as well, but because I weren't quite happy with the gauge, we're not doing that. Uh, yeah, so when I'm drilling out for my fur fix, I'll drill an hole out where I know my uh, Dutch pin's going to go. Uh, and you just basically just bang it in there. I'll put a spacer behind it so you can get the line behind it. Uh, and in this situation where it's overhand, I'll just use one of these clamps um, to hold it there. And that's it. Uh, on this side, it'll just be uh, two Dutch clamps um, pinned in. It's that simple, really. They... Uh, Right, they just go in like that. Profile there, bit of batting behind it, and just bang it in. Great things. Yo. This is what we did down here. Uh, got 75 mil full from there to there. Um, put this little bit of brickwork up here. They wanted the face side, that side. They got it. Uh, flattens, I know, not best, but that's what they wanted. Gravel board and the uh, fence panel back in. That's the, uh, what's it called? Party wall, that's the party wall agreement, satisfied. Um, so now I'm gonna get on with this. Oh, this over hand work. Bit of a pain, this one. Um, these fit bricks come in handy for you though. What I do, I put the uh, corner rock up about for that end and then just keep moving it up. Easy, so you can't walk around there. Um, because we've got this gully down here, I put a bit of DPC down here to protect it, but it's still a bit green. Now, the plan was to uh, just build it. You always just over around, you're going to drop stuff down here and just get the hose down and wash it all out, you know. So, we've got that 75 mil fall on it, so it will wash out, but um, it might damage it a bit. So, I'll probably get a few more calls on here. Um, just so I can reach down and clean that up and then I'll just take the corner up and then run it in the mower then it will take the hose then it will gone, gone off a bit more um, I know no one likes these flittons because they are crap but I'll tell you what though they're money earners that's all we had years ago they like this house um, it's all in flittons probably not LBC's but they're flittons maybe uh, Marston's or something like that but uh, no top and tail in there I can tell you <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I had a period in the 80s, um, we was building warehouses, um, big warehouses, and it was all in Flittons, and we was a good, good gang of bricklayers, and it, we were very regimental with it, with these, because they're easy to lay, they're light, 
And what we do, every six courses, we just stop, joint them up, brush them, and it was perfect. And then six courses is your tyres, isn't it? So you never forgot your tyres. We just carried on like that, you know, um, like a well old machine it was. Uh, yeah, frost the night, got the S in, we're covering up. Um, I had thick ice on my windscreen this morning, and it wasn't supposed to freeze. You know, not that frost, but you know, only get like half inch thick of ice on it. Um, so, but it didn't affect it down here. Um, I'm 10 miles away from my house here, uh, where I live, I'm down in the Lee Valley, so right near the river, so it tends to freeze a bit more. Right, let's do a bit more. Oh, Wednesday, it's turned cold, isn't it? Um, I'm on a place called Potter's Bar, we're all right today, it's going up to about 4 degrees. Uh, tomorrow and Friday it's not getting, it's getting to 1 degree, um, just for a couple of hours, so... I don't think we'll be laying bricks. Tomorrow I've got scaffolders coming in the morning. So we'll probably get the day in tomorrow and load it out and get it all loaded out, get it all ready. Uh, yeah, winter, innit? That's what happens. Cold weather. Um, wouldn't really bother me, but I've got to get this job up because I'm away next week. And he wants to get the roof on and that, so I'll we'll see how we go. Um, I don't... That silo, mate, that can't be a lot of good in this weather, can it? I mean, I've hardly ever used it for years. Um, but it takes ages to go off, doesn't it? So... You know, you get a long period of frost and that, and it's never going to go off, is it? I wouldn't like to be using it. You lot um, who are using mortar, using through a mixer, um, antifreeze. I don't use it myself. I have used it years ago. I don't mean it does much. Um, it's not really an antifreeze. It's a rapid hardener. That's all it is. But if you are going to use it, be aware, read the instructions, because last time I looked, it states on it, do not use with an admix. That means you can't use your frost proofer with fed mix um, because I don't know what it does but it won't do the muck a lot of good it'll probably fail over time um, there's a reason why you can't do it anyway um, probably ought to do with air entrainment and um, how, how the rapid hardener works uh, and also one of the reasons why I don't use it you have to put an awful lot of it in um, just check um, have a read and check it because um, it, then you put the right amount of volume in in your mix because um, if you don't, you just there's no point in fucking using it, really, is there? Um, right, uh, new boot Wednesday. Thank you, everyone who um, recommended all different types of boots, and I did look at them all. Um, the ones, like the last two pairs, I chucked away, and what were given to me. Before that, my decent pair of boots I had were, I think they're called Blue Steel or Steel Blue, they're Australian, and I had them about ten years, but I didn't wear them every day. They. Uh, um, they, uh, they just got used in adverse conditions, but they stopped being waterproof. So um, I'll get a new pair. Um, so the ones I went for are these. Um, Hakes. Um, Lee Mill recommended them. Um, I looked at all the others, and yeah, I preferred these. Um, they're Gore-Tex, so they're waterproof. They're safety boot. Um, they're 130 quid. But... Yeah, you've got to look after yourself, haven't you? I mean, some people are going to spend 150 quid on a pair of shoes and wear them once at a wedding, wouldn't they? And uh, spend 30 quid on a pair of boots for work, what they spend most of their life in. I don't get it. Right, let's get the boots on. Um, don't know where my boss is. Melvin ain't here yet. And uh, anyway, um, we'll make a start. Catch you in a while. Today's set up. Uh, just going to finish this off. I normally only go about 15 with this overhand work, and then we put bandstands up and that. But we're having the whole thing scaffolded, so we're going to got this hop up here, get us up to 21 um, all the way around, so it's all right for the scaffolder. Um, there's a little tip with the wall ties here when you're doing overhand work, just bend them down. Oh, blimey, that one's loose, and that's the reason why you do it. See that? Bend them down. Because what happens if you leave them sticking out, you walk past, Britler just knocks them and knocks them and knocks them and they just come loose and they're useless, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Um, so it just keeps them out of the way and when you come to do it, just bend them up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's cold. Early Christmas, isn't it? That's changed a bit, that weather forecast from this morning. Shit, isn't it? Freezing the rest of this week. Well, two days, we won't, well, we'll load this out tomorrow once the cab holds up. Um, next week, it's a no go as well, isn't it? So, minus one and one degrees. Look, I can build corners. People doubt me that I couldn't. Here's the boss. Hello, boss. 
done like I've been filmed. Um, I've just had to shore that up. That one moves a little bit. They told don't they, these blockwork cons, I don't have the insulation or what. Oh, a little bit, but so, um, I'll just brace it out. Trouble if you get a bit of a frost, it'll, uh, it will force it over. Anyway, that's sound. I'm gonna get that in, cover it up, and we're going to the pub. Someone's got to do it. Uh, Friday. Nice day though. Look at that. But, uh, too cold to lay. Um, we've loaded everything out. Covered everything up. Uh, all loaded out here. Covered that up. Um, scat bolt. I'll explain it just to another video with the uh, overhand work. Always have your scaffold the same height as your block work. So then you can stand on the block work as you're laying. And, uh, you know, you're not going to give yourself a bad back. Well, not much of a bad back anyway. Um, that's it really. Um, next week, it's still going to be cold. I've got an RSJ to go in there. If Melbourne can get the RSJ, um, we may come and put that in. I'll see. Little job or two. Um, other than that, that'll be it. Um, I might do one more little video. Me and Damien are up to something um, this weekend or next week sometime um, it's nothing to do with brick lane but uh, something different so I'll probably video it I'll keep you suspenders on that one uh, and this time next week we'll be in a foreign country and I'll be filming something there for you so uh, yeah it's a bit early to go down to the pub though isn't it I went in a pub early yesterday didn't do myself any favours but uh, let's see alright then have a nice weekend see you later